HDMX is a new technology that allows us to build interactive UIs without all the complexity that usually comes with JavaScript and even more with JavaScript frameworks. And that is a sort of a, a breath of fresh air because it allows us as developers to move faster and build uh, things that are interactive without having a lot of complexity. So in this one, we're going to go over exactly how to build an HTMX counter using Golang. Now I've gone ahead and set up here a brand new project. And as you can see, if we go ahead and type in here, go run, this is going to essentially log here an hello world message. Now with this in mind, we first of all need to go ahead and set up our router. So this essentially allows us to route a request via HTTP and then we can go ahead and respond with an HTMX response in order to alter our state of the application via the server. So let's go ahead and first of all take a look here at the documentation and as you can see in order to install we simply need to go ahead copy this line and then inside of our root folder of the project let's go ahead and paste this in here press return and as you can see this was added to our project. Now let's go ahead and navigate back to our uh, documentation and let's simply go ahead and copy this part so we don't have to go ahead and type all of this by hand. And then let's go ahead and delete this line. And now when I saved essentially this file, this went ahead and tried to import this from, as you can see here, go she and then she, but we actually want to go ahead and import this from the version number five. And also same thing here for our middleware. Let's also go ahead and make sure that this is not being used. And now let's go ahead and replace this with the same hello world message. So now if we go ahead and press in here, go run. And actually I forgot to add in here only the local host. So let's go ahead and modify this. And now let's go ahead and type again here, go run. And now let's go ahead and here inside of our HTTP uh, client, let's go ahead and type in here, localhost port 3000. And then as you can see, we get back here the hello world message. Now the next step is for us to go ahead and be able to render a template that is then going to allow us to replace our counter with the value that we want. Let's go ahead and create in here an index.html file. And inside this file, let's go ahead and simply paste all of this code. And inside of this template, we have a couple of things. First of all, we have a script in here that is going to allow us to use Tailwind CSS inside of this project. Then we're also going to go ahead and add in here the script that is going to allow us to use HTMX because although we're not using directly JavaScript, HTMX needs to use JavaScript under the hood. Now, if you were using a production application, you probably wouldn't want to go ahead and add this in here. So simply D. A CSS script tag, but you would rather want to go ahead and compile only the CSS from Tailwind CSS that you would need. And actually, if you want to learn how to build a full stack application, I'm going to leave a link down below so you can go ahead and check the full stack blueprint where I'm going to show you exactly how using Django and HTMX build a production application full stack completely from scratch. But with this in mind, again, we simply want in this case to add this right over here and then also the script for our HTMX. And finally, let's go ahead and check in here how exactly we're going to be able to go ahead and replace everything inside of this template by using HTMX. So instead of again using JavaScript, something like React or Svelte, we're simply going to go ahead and send a request to our server and then return some HTML that is going to allow us to automatically replace the value without re-rendering the page. First of all, we need to define in here the ID of our counter, which I've gone ahead and called simply counter and then in order to essentially tell HTMX that we want to replace this div right over here we need to do the following first of all we need to pass in here hx dash post and then we're going to go ahead and call for this case right over here the decrease uh, endpoint which is going to allow us to decrease the counter and then we need to specify here the target and what this essentially means is that we're telling HTMX that whatever HTML that we get back from the server, we want to go ahead and use this as the target to essentially swap this right over here with what comes from the server. And here, as you can see, we have the exact same thing. So we're going to post here to increase and then the target is also going to be the counter because we want to always replace this div right over here. So now let's go ahead and render this template. Let's go ahead and simply delete this part 
from our handler and then let's go ahead and type in here template we're going to go ahead and for this case ignore our error and then let's go ahead and call in here our template package it needs to be html forward slash template then in here let's go ahead and parse the following file so in this case we only have one file so let's go ahead and pass in here index dot html and then let's go ahead and execute this template so let's go ahead and call here the execute template method and then in here we first of all need to pass our response writer then the name of the template that we want to execute and finally the data which in this case is still going to be nil because at this moment we don't have an initial value for our counter that is going to come from the server we're going to go ahead and do this in just a second but from now this is everything that we need in order to execute our template and render it in our browser so let's go ahead and stop here our server and run it again and now if we go ahead and open this as you can see we now have our html in here and also this is beautifully styled with Tailwind CSS. Now, the next step is for us to be able to actually go ahead and click on one of these buttons and go ahead and increase and decrease the counter value because at the moment, if we go ahead and check here our console, for example, and we click on something, as you can see, it says that it was not found. And that's because we still don't have the endpoints implemented. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. So let's go ahead and type in here r.post. And again, we're going to use here the post method and the pattern for this one is going to be, for example, increase. And then let's go ahead and pass in here this function. Let's make sure that this is being ignored. So we don't need for now access to our request. And then let's go ahead and do the following. First of all, let's go ahead and type in here template. And then let's also uh, using here the template package do the following. Instead of now parsing a file from our server. So instead of, for example, parsing the index.html file, we want to go ahead and simply parse a string. So let's go ahead and do the following. Type in here must. And then in here, we need to go ahead and type the following. So let's also go ahead and type template and then new. So we're going to call this one counter. And then in here, let's go ahead and use here the parse method, which is again going to allow us to simply parse a string instead of a file. Now inside of this one, we need to actually be able to replace inside of the string the counter value. So because of that, let's go ahead and type in here format and then sprint f. And this is essentially going to allow us to pass a string that is then going to have some kind of value that can be replaced and then in here let's go ahead and paste our uh, div counter so let's go ahead and simply copy this one and then paste this in here and also let's make sure that this is escaped so both of these strings need to be escaped and in here let's go ahead and replace this zero with something that is going to allow us to replace it with a value and for now let's simply leave this as one and then let's go ahead and finally execute our template and this one is going to be counter and the value is also going to be nil and now if we go ahead and run our server again and move back to our browser as you'll be able to see when we click here on increase this now changes to one now if you go ahead and click more than one time this still is uh, one because inside of our server this value is still one now let's go ahead and do the exact same thing but for the decrease method let's go ahead and simply copy this code so we don't have to type this again and then this one is going to be decrease and in here instead of one let's for now simply keep it as minus one and now if we go ahead and restart our server and then move back to our browser as you'll be able to see when we click on increase this goes to one and when we click on decrease it goes to minus one next let's go ahead and add some type of functionality inside of golang that is going to allow us to actually increase the counter and decrease the counter and also be able to go ahead and pass into our template the uh, current value so uh, instead of for example when we refresh our page we get always a zero we want to keep that value inside of our server so the server is the source of truth and then we want to go ahead and essentially pass this to our browser each time that the page loads initially so let's go ahead and move here 
and simply go ahead and type all of this. So we have in here a counter, we also need to go ahead and use mutex in order to make sure that we always lock this before altering the value and then go ahead and unlock this after that. So first of all, before we actually go ahead and add the initial value, let's go ahead and actually make sure that we are able to increase and decrease the counter value and then pass that information down to our browser. So let's start by first of all, copying this string right over here and let's go ahead and create a new thing that we're going to go ahead and call template string and then in here let's simply go ahead and replace this format.sprintf with our template string and then let's go ahead and do the exact same thing here so let's go ahead and delete this line and now as you can see we have this in here that is then going to allow us to pass now here inside of our data so again remember that for now we had simply the data as nil and now we're actually going to need to have some type of data so let's go ahead and create it so the data is going to be of type map the key is going to be string and for this case the value is going to be an integer and the key is going to again be counter value and the value is going to be the one that comes from our counter. So for now, let's keep it this at zero and let's go ahead and initialize our counter up here. So let's say here, we want to go ahead and initialize our counter. And then we now have access to this counter that is going to allow us to increase, decrease the value and get the value. So let's go ahead and replace this with counter.getValue. And this is going to return us an integer with the current counter value. And now let's go ahead and paste this in here so we can now go ahead and return this to our browser. And finally, let's simply go ahead and copy this exact same code. Now again, if you were in production, you probably wouldn't want to go ahead and repeat yourself. But again, this is a toy application. So for this example, this is okay. So now let's go ahead and actually do the following. Before we go ahead and pass this in here, so here we are grabbing our counter value, we want to go ahead and increase it. So let's go ahead and say counter increase. And in this situation, we want to do the opposite. So we want to go ahead and decrease the counter value. So now let's go ahead and start our server again. And if we move back to our browser, refresh the page, we can now go ahead and increase the counter value and also go ahead and decrease it. But now you'll see that something is quite not right inside of this application. If we go ahead and refresh, it starts at zero. But if we go ahead and increase, it goes to seven. And that's again, because we still don't have the initial value that is coming from our server. And one of the cool things about HTMX is that we don't have two points of truth. So instead of having state on the client and then state on the server, we can simply go ahead and have one source of truth, which in this case is the server. For this, again, toy application, we simply have a counter that we increase uh, and decrease and keep it in memory. So just so you understand what I mean by this, let's go ahead and stop the server and then go ahead and start it again. And as you'll be able to see, this now go ba goes back to zero. But if you had something like a database, you could simply keep that as the source of truth and not have to worry about the client having that information in sync with your server. So now let's go ahead and create our initial value. So in here, because we are parsing this index.html file, we want to go ahead and modify this in here. And let's go ahead and type the exact same thing. So instead of zero, we want this to be the counter value. And now in here, let's go ahead and copy this code. So let's say that we want to use here the counter and uh, the value. And actually we don't want to increase this when the page refreshes. We simply want to go ahead and uh, pass this data in here. So we can now go ahead and grab our counter value. And now if we go ahead and refresh here our server, so go ahead and stop the server and then start it again. As you can see, this comes back from the server as zero because zero is the initial value. And if we go ahead and increase or decrease, we now can simply go ahead and refresh the page and it is going to still be five because that source of truth is the server and that data is coming automatically from the server. So as you can see, it is pretty simple to build a counter with HTMX and Golang. 
And the cool thing about HTMX is that it allows us to build front-end applications and it doesn't really matter what our backend is. So you can use this exact same logic and replace it with something like, let's say, Ruby on Rails or Laravel. And if you want to learn exactly how to build full stack applications from scratch, so if you want to be able to build something real, something that users can use by using HTMX and Django, then go ahead and visit webdevfuel.com forward slash the full stack blueprint so you can go ahead and learn exactly step by step how by using Django you can go ahead and create a full stack application and in the process you'll become a better web developer and you'll be more valuable as a programmer. So with that in mind I'll see you on the next one.